Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 18th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Renato came across an interesting phishing attempt that actually involved two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is usually the best defense against phishing, but in this particular case, the bad guys actually tried to bypass two-factor authentication as well. This attempt was directed against Brazilian users of a bank in Brazil that does hand to its customers little cards with essentially one-time passwords that you can use. So it's really just a printed set of numbers. Now, what this particular phishing attempt did was they asked the user for their username and password, and then they asked them to just take a picture of that card with their camera and send it in, upload it via the phishing site. I think this is pretty ingenious and I can see where victims will fall for something like this because they don't quite understand the significance of actually taking a picture and sending it in given that they still believe that they are connected to their bank. Now this is also one problem of these printed one-time password cards. They are quite cheap to produce of course and not all that inconvenient to use. But the problem with these systems is that you don't really know if someone made a copy of the card and probably many users will make copies of these cards in order to have like one at work, one at home and maybe keep one in their wallet. That's one advantage of going with real hard tokens that will only display one number at a time and they actually have some protection protection against, for example, disassembling the token. And Guido Franken is at it again with his fuzzing skills and this time he looked at the radius and DHCP parsers produced by the free radius project. Radius is an authentication protocol used in many networking systems. Free radius is probably the most popular open source implementation of this protocol. So it is widely used and a code produced by free radius of course is used by many other radius implementations that may not necessarily readily be identified as free radius. Now, Guido found a total of 15 issues where five of them are not exploitable. Six of these issues are for DHCP and four for Radius. Now, this number of 10 vulnerabilities is more than was actually found in the last 10 years in these projects. And yet again, shows the power of fuzzing over a simple code review. Now, two of the vulnerabilities can lead to a remote code execution, so certainly make sure that you update as quickly as possible. If you do have a Radius server that you got from a vendor and it is based on Free Radius, make sure that you do get appropriate patches in order to secure the server. Now, these servers, of course, should not be exposed directly to the internet, but in particular, since they are often involved involved in authentication, you can't always avoid having unauthenticated new systems that are connecting to your network, connecting to this radius server. And Checkpoint has news about the popular Mac OS malware OS X Dock. And now uh, this particular malware has been going around for quite a while now. It always arrives uh, with a valid developer signature. Now uh, these certificates of course can easily be gotten from Apple for a hundred dollars. So no real difficulty in obtaining uh, one of these uh, certificates. What's sort of interesting about this link latest uh, malware. Now it does uh, go through some pain here to disable other anti-malware software, but it also installs Signal, the crypto messaging software. And it's not really clear based on Checkpoint's write-up why they're doing this. Uh, now, according to Checkpoint, uh, one possibility is that the attacker may later actually use Signal in order to contact the victim 
to, for example, get a second factor to authenticate for a bank account or do follow-up attacks that then rely on social engineering. And of course, by having the user install Signal, and explaining to the user that this is a secure messenger that the bank can use to contact the user, the user will then be more likely going to fall for any additional social engineering attacks. So pretty interesting development here for OS X Malware and I guess we'll see where this goes, but overall really not a lot of this in the wild. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.